If you are listening to this podcast, it means you are searching. Searching for someone who understands you. Someone who gets you. You are yearning to be understood and to belong. Welcome to the Someone Gets Me podcast, where we help smart, talented, and sensitive people navigate an often insensitive world. Let's welcome your host, ambassador, author, speaker, and mentor, Diane Allen. Diane has the experience and knowledge to educate and inspire as she has been there and understands your unique intensities and their challenges. Hey everyone, it's Diane with Someone Gets Me and today I have an amazing interview for you. You're going to love this person and she comes to you from a really neat area of the country in Tennessee. But the thing I love about this woman is that she's authentic and real and she really cares about people. So I asked her to come on the show so she could share her very unique skill set with you. Today we have Sandy Freshy. She's a level four certified human design specialist. She has gotten all kinds of training. She has learned so many things, but the thing I love about her the most is that she's very eclectic and she's good at pulling in all kinds of resources to help all the people in her sphere of influence move forward. She's amazing at it. In fact, I've even had a session with her and just what she showed me on my human design chart of being a manifesting generator, I had to remember that, um, was amazing and has really helped me just in an hour of time with her, it changed my world. So she shares information to bring this very unique way of seeing your life to you so that you can have the guidance and the understanding so that you can live an even better, more empowered life than you ever thought possible. And take it from me, I have actually used her services and she rocks. So welcome to the show, Sandy. Thank you, Diane, and welcome everybody who's listening. This is such a pleasure and an honor to be here um, in this conversation with you. Yes, I'm so excited that you're here because I love how you see things as a person, and I love human design. In fact, when I had my first human design chart done before I even met you, I didn't even know what it was. And then you started telling me about it. I'm like, oh, I know what that is. Let's start off with a little bit of discussion about human design, how you found it, what's important to you about it. Like, Just give all of us a little idea of, of Sandy and how you landed on it and, and what turns you on about it, and then a little bit about what it is. Okay, so I want to start by uh, just drawing a parallel with the title of your podcast because when people get a human design reading, and this was true for me, uh, it, usually a lot of times they feel like someone gets them. Like I've had people say, someone gets me finally. And that's um, what human design is about. Uh, I kind of came to it when I was really in the midst of huge life changing events like one life falling apart and another one not yet coming together and by a series of synchronicities I met a coach who d did human design readings and she introduced me to my chart it's a crazy looking chart with a bunch of shapes and colors and lines and numbers as you know Diane <laughs> and symbols and all of these things but there was something so resonant about the way that it looked I felt like I I recognized it and and that's kind of the magic of it because it's a visual of who you are at a very deep level and it actually um, there are aspects of it that are very poetic and esoteric translations of our genetic coding. And, um, and it, it, it is who you are. And most people who see it, I don't know if you had that experience, Diane, when you first saw your chart, but a lot of people who first see their chart go, what is this? I know this, but what is it? Even though it looks foreign, what is it? <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's what led me into it was just this, I got introduced to it. I started to learn some things about why things in my life weren't working the way that most people's lives were working. And the truth is all of us are de uniquely designed to be, to have our own inner knowing and our own way of making decisions. But uh, 
uh, those of us who've been on the planet for a while, or a lot of us who've been on the planet for a while, have probably had a lot of that trained out of us. So for me, it was a process of coming back home to myself. And then when I got into life coaching, I really started to recognize the value of being able to introduce people to this roadmap or this blueprint of them and how it can show them um, the way that they can get in touch with who they are authentically and live in alignment with that. And then when that happens, everything kind of comes together. You know, the whole, the whole, the whole life path opens up for people at that point because they're no longer worried about what they should do or, you know, the, the monkey mind of, am I doing it right? And I've got to hold on to this information or I've got to do this the way that other people do it. It just starts to fall away over a period of time as you begin to have these revelations and understandings about how you're really designed to work. And that's what happened with me. And I'm really passionate about sharing what I know about design with other people. So with what, and what I can see about their design so that they can really begin to live that and experience that as well. Oh, that's cool. I remember when I had mine done, a, a friend of mine who's a nutrition person actually had just learned it and did it. I didn't even know that's what it was called until I ran into you and I knew, saw the picture. And then I asked you if manifesting generator is one of them and you said yes. And then I'm like, ah, oh, that's what it was. I <laughs> didn't put any of that together, but I remember what, whatever she said to explain it, it was very general and I don't remember all of it, but I do remember thinking, that's what it is about me. That's why. And, and so the secret part of me that felt like no one got me or this part of me I didn't even know how to tell anyone was there finally was validated and I understood that it was like a real thing and that I was really okay and that it was meant to be there that way. And then I go, oh yeah, I do manifest just about anything I think about. I do generate things all the time. I've had people sarcastically say to me, all you have to do is say it, Diane, and it shows up. <laughs> and I'm like, and when I saw that, I'm like, aha, all that. And I was naive to it. I was naive to the fact that that's really how it was or other people saw it when I was way younger. And then I saw this years later, I'm like, whoa. Then I run into you and I'm like, huh, this really does have a major impact on how I operate in the world. Yeah. And for you, Diane, especially because I've seen, you know, I've, I've worked with you and observed you over time. The one thing I can really validate for you is that you're a powerhouse. And that's what, that's what manifesting generators are about. That's what your energy is about. You have this powerful energy to work and work consistently and not all most people on the planet have that but not all people but everybody just about has sort of been trained to think that they have that but you actually do you know <laughs> and I, I watched you know the books you put out and the, you know the podcast and all of these things you know you whip up things on your website and I'm just in awe of that because you're really using your energy in the way that it needs to be used and if people have ever said to you slow down Diane you know you got to do one thing at a time uh, you know don't quit this multitasking because it's going to dilute your attention that's not who you are you know, you have all this energy moving through you that has to, has to get out there. And the beauty for you as a manifesting generator is that you're able to facilitate opportunities for other people. It's like your energy field can, can embrace other people and humanity and the people that you recognize and, and the rest of us can just kind of rest into that as you support us with your powerhouse of energy. You know, that, that's really, really a gift of your uniqueness for your energy type. Wow, I didn't know that. I just learned something. But that's, I've, when you say that, I have goosebumps. Like it rings so true and I never thought of it that way. And uh, that's why I love human design and knowing you because it's like you're just casually talking about it and I'm going, whoa, oh my God, wow, she's right. You know, because... I um, told a friend yesterday, even I said the greatest saddest moments in my life are when I have the perception that there I'm not able to share or give or generate something or do something, create work. Like there's no one to work with, or I don't have an idea right there. I'm working on this book or this other thing or whatever, that that's when I feel the saddest. But when I have a project to work on or get out there in the world or something to express, then everything shifts in me. And I'm like, 
going on it, you know? And so mm -hmm. that's what you just said in a different way, much more eloquently. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, that's you, really you, you get activated by response. That's what, what uh, you're like, the, you're, the manifesting generator is a subset of the generator energy type. There are, there are five energy or four energy types, four or five. Uh, generators, manifesting generators are kind of the same thing because you have the work energy, but manifesting generators are the powerhouse workers in the world. And you're, and as a, uh, a worker in the world you're constantly responding to things like and if you don't have anything in your tangible in your life to respond to it's kind of like the energy just sort of falls through the floor <laughs> and, and like you said you're, you're probably the saddest at that those points oh yeah that makes sense to me all right well I'm already learning I hope you guys are all learning too as well as I am and so I guess you could um, call Sandy and she can tell you if you're a manifesting generator too or what you are. Um, but let's talk about overthinking for a minute. Yes. Uh, the number one request from the audience here, the listeners, is all about overthinking. And I put a poll out and 100% of the people who answered the poll said that overthinking was an issue. Some of them checked more than one thing, but 100% of the respondees checked overthinking. And I know that it's a very big um, issue with a lot of people who have fast moving brains and are gifted and visionaries, which is who most of our listeners are. And I also think it has to do sometimes with stress and fear and stuff. And I also believe, this is where you come in in your wisdom, I believe that there's multiples of ways to soothe ourselves and help ourselves and get out of those traps without labeling it as um, a pathology or beating ourselves up. And so I'm betting that you have an idea and a philosophy about overthinking and maybe a way that you can shed some light or maybe give us a little life hack or some information that will help put one more tool in our toolbox so that when overthinking strikes, there's a solution that, that maybe you have that no one else has shared with us yet. Okay, how am I going to, let me think about how I'm going to do this without the visuals. <laughs> There's in traditional human design, we have a, a term called conditioning. And a lot of the traditional terminology in human design can be kind of uh, black and white, you know, mm -hmm. this or that kind of, of stuff. So, but I, I want to sort of bring it down. I want to just couch it in this, this, this term conditioning and explain what that is, because that really kind of leads us into the place where we have mind going out of control, overthinking, basically. We, over the course of life, are affected by other people. And on your human design chart, you can actually see where you are designed energetically to take in those influences. And if you're not aware that they're not yours, you're holding on to them. And, those, and then you, you feel them very deeply and then you start to think about them. And you start to have, um, you know, worries about certain things. You know, for instance, um, one of the shapes on the human design chart is the uh, there's a little diamond in the center of the chart. If anybody has their chart and they're looking at it, R roughly where the heart chakra would be or the heart center in the Hindu chakra system. And it's the center for love, identity, and direction. So overthinking in that respect can happen through uh, if, if that center, if you're designed through that center to take in love, identity, and direction from others, it can kick up a whole lot of worry about what's my life purpose? What's my path in life? Who's going to love me? Is, do these people like me? Why do I feel so lonely? <laughs> All of those things that kind of cloud what's really important about that, that energy that we experience through that center that we process through that center and those themes of all is well when I'm when I stay true to myself my heart resonates at the frequency of my being and it attracts the right people to me and I'm attracted to and moved along the right direction for me to fulfill the purpose that I was born to fulfill but if you don't know that you've been affected 
over your life by other people's direction and what they think you should be doing or how they think you should love them or get love or whatever it is, then it's going to get really clouded because you're going to feel like maybe something's missing or maybe you're, you know, because you change direction a lot, if that center is, if you're designed to take that in rather than to be sort of have a fixed experience of it, you will, uh, it, your, your experience will get clouded by all of this mind chatter about, you know, the love, the, your, your love, where's it coming from? How do I love people? Um, who am I? Where, what am I doing in life? What's my direction in life? And that's only one example. You know, the, all, of, all of the little shapes on the, the body graph show us the types of energies that we either have a fixed way of experiencing or a variable way of experiencing. And when we have a variable way of experiencing it, we are highly vulnerable to the conditioning that is, comes from other people. Uh, so it's really important to know how you're processing energy. That's amazing. So let me make sure I'm hearing this correctly. When we look at the human design chart, I got the diamond in the over the heart area and then the other spaces. So if I'm somebody who takes in energy more in instead of fixed, then I'm prone to overthinking because it'll make me worry about all those things. I'm, what how I people love me, care about me, or whatever, right? Right. So that's very interesting because most people think that overthinking is only a brain thing, like I'm overthinking. And what I'm hearing you say is, well, that could be part of it, but there's this other heart thing going on that's taking on other energy, most likely, that is then creating this churning of thoughts and this chatter and this ongoing mental it, it, exactly it can do that until you really realize that you're holding on to things that aren't relevant for you so that's where the freedom is go oh, hold on a second i've taken on all this energy from all these people or these situations and they're not even mine yeah exactly so I and it's it's yeah, and it's not just energy. Like, there's energy when you're around other people. You know, there's the energy of, of being in the same room with other people. Mm -hmm. And maybe they have a fixed experience with that particular energy center, and you don't. So you're taking that in. But there's also all of the past programming that you've had from people who maybe have had a fixed experience with that energy where you don't. And all of the attitudes and all of the assumptions that you've made and the beliefs that you've, you've uh, uh, formulated from those assumptions over time. Right. Because if I believe that over these assumptions over time because of the energy from other people, that could all be false. Exactly. It could be somebody else's stuff, not mine anyway, and it wasn't meant to be mine. Exactly. It because, it, yeah, it wasn't yours in the first place. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's freedom there. I'll bet you get a lot of ahas from your clients, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, a big one is the emotional center. And, and let me just say, if, you know, if people have, um, you know, are running to, you know, running to get their human design chart, what we're talking about is the difference between the, um, the geometric shapes that are colored in, those are the ones that you have a fixed experience with. And then there are the white ones, and we call that the defined if they're colored in, undefined if they're white. And the ones that are white are the ones we're talking about in terms of this uh, term terminology of conditioning. So <laughs> of what you're taking in that's not yours. So a big one is uh, the emotional center. So if you're looking at the chart, it's like, up from the bottom, you'll see three, one up from the bottom. There's one on the bottom, which is the root, and then the one in the, up above it is the sacral. And then to the right of that uh, second triangle from the second square from the bottom is a triangle. That's the emotional solar plexus. If that one is white, that's a big one. If you master that one, you've got it made. <laughs> because that one's all about taking in other people's emotions. And a lot of times people struggle with, who have that undefined emotional center, struggle with being labeled or 
having an experience of being a, a drama queen or just riding on other people's emotions and, you know, being up one minute and down the next and not really having a lot of control over that, maybe worrying about how other over over worrying and overthinking about how other people feel because they're taking in other people's emotional energy and then they want to do something about it. So, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I taking care of them correctly? And, and, you know, am I letting someone down? <laughs> you know, all of that stuff gets lodged in that undefined emotional center when really in all of the centers, it's about all of the undefined centers. It's about cultivating awareness and mastery so that you are wise about how that energy is to be used. And it's, and, and especially in the emotional center, it's about having it being an emotional empath, being able to witness other people's emotions without all of your thoughts and all of your worry clouding the process. Mm -hmm. So that would go with my next question that I was going to ask you that you kind of already helped with, and that is the whole idea of being overwhelmed. Because what oh, yeah. I'm hearing is that that, that that would align with what you were just talking about with that emotional center. Then I'm quickly thinking about my chart in my head, and I can't remember. I think mine's undefined, but I'm not sure. So I'll have to go look. But it sounds like that would be one, one of the centers to kind of look at if somebody was feeling a lot of overwhelm. Yes, emotional overwhelm. Mm -hmm. Now I'll tell you, my that my emotional uh, solar plexus is undefined, and the way it shows up for me, um, not so much anymore because I've worked through this over time. But the way that I realized, first realized that I was taking in other people's emotional energy and getting overwhelmed, is that my body would shake when I had to um, uh, was in a position where I had to confront someone. And, um, and sometimes I would shut people down emotionally, try to shut them down so I wouldn't have to feel that. Other times I would run. <laughs> but it, it, was, it was just this overwhelming sense of emotion. It doesn't have to be negative. It can be positive, you know. Um, you, your mother goes to give you a hug and it makes you cry. <laughs> you know, that kind of emotional sensitivity can be because you're taking in others' emotions and feeling them deeply and you get overwhelmed. Right. There's also mental overwhelm because there are centers that govern thought, inspiration and thought. Uh, you know, there's just uh, work overwhelm in the sacral center which you that wouldn't be your experience but because you have a defined sacral center as a manifesting generator but as a as a projector energy type the the type that I am work overwhelm is a big thing being around other people's work energy and feeling like I have to keep up is huge and then that's overwhelming physically wow so so I just got had another one of those little ahas listening to you about the whole idea of comparison. So when we yes. get in this world with people comparing themselves to others, you know, I was, I directed a uh, rehab center for a long time and I had my number one top counselor that I relied on the most there as the director always kept saying, well, I can never be you. I can't be you. I can't do what you're doing. And I'm like, you're not supposed to be me. You're supposed to be you. And I, and we went through these dialogue frequently of, I can't do it. I can't do it like Diane does it. I'm, I'm not like you. And several of the other people, I'm like, I'm, no one's asking anyone to be like anyone else. It's the diversity and it's all bringing our, our greatness and our genius, whatever that is to the table. That's what I value. I'm not asking anyone to be like me, but I'm imagining that if we put all of our charts together, that we would see that, that we would see there was that little bit of a difference enough where they would easily get that work overwhelmed thinking that they had to be like me, even though they didn't have to be like me. Exactly. And, and when we break it out in terms of um, human design types, there, there are the four, well, yeah, the four types. We'll go with the four types today. Um, and each one has a purpose. Each, each person, each energy type has an energy field that operates in a certain way so that they fulfill a purpose in relationship with the other types. So for instance, the manifestor energy type has the energy to initiate action. 
but they don't have that sacral work energy. So they, they need people to follow through and really build and finish what they start. So they would turn to generators and manifesting generators with their ideas and initiate generators and manifesting generators who have the work energy, but may not necessarily know how to use it. <laughs> or know what to use it for. So you would get initiated, ideally, into the next new creation, the next new thing to build. And then you would probably, generators and manifesting generators kind of go along for a while in their work, but a lot of times they hit a plateau or they, they, um, they can't see the next step. And that's where the projector energy type comes in. Again, another uh, energy type that's not designed to work, projectors are designed to advise and guide. So generators and manifesting generators would naturally turn to a projector and say, hey, what do you see here that I need to do differently? And then there's another energy type, you know, and the projector would come in and say, okay, do this, correct this pattern. I see this in the pattern. I'm going to go home and take a nap. The manifester was long gone on either taking a nap or doing something starting something else then you know the generators would would do their continue to do their work and maybe have um, the projector come in and maybe the manifester would come in and, and start another aspect of the work and then there's this one very rare energy type called the reflectors who are really good at being at the on the outside they actually have all of their energy centers open so they can feel a group so once the group of all the other energy types really get into sync and get to working, they can look out to the, the reflector and go, hey, how are we all doing? And the reflector can kind of bounce in and go, okay, let me feel how it is through, through my system. Okay, you're doing well, or oh, I'm not feeling so well, something's off here. And then they go and do their, they go off and do their other thing. <laughs> They're, they're here to kind of reflect the, the, the health and the uh, well-being of, of the level of health and well-being in a group because they feel it or they live it basically and reflect it out. Wow, that's amazing. I can picture all the people and all the little scenarios and once you appreciate the flow of it, it has a beauty and an elegance all its own. So, yeah, so I, I brought that out because we were talking about comparison. Mm -hmm. and how there really is no comparison. I mean, there's no comparison between energy types because every energy type has a gift to offer to the other types. And when we get down to the level of the individual charts, there's no comparison there because each of us is so unique. We're, you know, we're like little snowflakes, you know, we're each uniquely created through our, our design, through our genetics to fulfill a certain purpose. And nobody else on the planet can fulfill that. And the only thing that's required to fulfill your purpose on the planet, you know, in, in human design theory, is to just be who you are, just to relax, be who you are, let go of comparison, which is another form of um, how you know when you're responding or reacting to conditioning, and, and let go of this need to think, allow the mind to observe the process without trying to control it, and let the body and honor what the body needs in order for you to be able to just fully step in and be where you need to be at the time that you need to be there to do what you need to do. Wow. That just takes so much stress off of things. It does, doesn't it? Whoa. It does. It does. It, it, it's such a refreshing way to just approach life in general, you know, and especially for people who like to think a lot and are cut off from their bodies or people who have really intense emotions and their brain needs to, you know, they need to have that equilibrium and that, that balance kind of, I was just, I feel so refreshed just listening to you explain it because it's like taking yourself off the hook of having to do things in this frenetic kind of crazy way over here that is often supported in our society that may not reflect what your actual real, real self way deep down in really is. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and then 
learning about your chart makes it even easier because each the, the founder of human design actually kind of broke it out to make it easy to just get because you could study for years with all the details but he made it very easy he broke out the types and then with each type each type actually has a strategy for how they deal with life so that they they can begin to kind of unwind this overthinking and uh, and begin to relax into who they are and really observe how their design really works how they're really designed to work and then he further um, made it so that people could understand how their body gives them cues when they need to make a decision because decisions are made from the level of the body for most people and not from the level of thinking the thinking is just to gather information and data and to see the big picture, but the actual decisions for actions are up to the body because the body has to take the action. <laughs> okay, so and, everybody, did you get that? Every, you can rewind and hear this a brilliant piece of knowledge because everyone thinks that the thinking is what's running a show. And I've often thought, well, really our bodies do. And you just said that. And so listen to what Sandy just said, rewind a few little seconds and listen to her again, because when we're stuck in our head and we ignore our body, it has grave results. And this is another example that we're hearing about from somebody who understands that deeper connection to make sure that the body has its say and its influence and is honored and revered and paid attention to and not ignored like is typical in a lot of cultures. So Listen to that wisdom coming out of this woman's mouth. She's, she's got, she has something for us that really can help change our lives. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, Sandy, but that was profound to the point where I have goosebumps. That was really, really amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, in traditional human design, it's actually called passenger consciousness. I know that's like a that's like a really woo-woo esoteric thing, but let me let me kind of break it down into a metaphor. Okay, so you have without going into all of the the cosmology and all of the woo woo stuff we we're born and you if you look on your chart you'll see like numbers on the on that are black and numbers that are red and you'll see red and black lines on your on your body graph the black side is what we're born with that that is known as our personality that's where the thinking comes from the red side is what we were imprinted with at the beginning of the third trimester of our development in the feet as a fetus. That's the body side. The personality when we're born comes in with all of these wonderful ideas about how to fulfill the soul's purpose and what it thinks it needs to do in order to do that, what the mind thinks it needs to do and all of that. I like to call it enthusiasm or whatever. But we forget about the body. The body is actually the vehicle that drives us through life. You know, we can't do, we, the soul can't fulfill its purpose if we're not here in our bodies and, and taking good care of our bodies and listening to our bodies. So when we look at the chart, we're actually looking at how the, how the body and mind are designed to work together for each individual. So think of the body as a vehicle, like a car the mind as the passengers in the car and then going back to that diamond in the center of the chest that's where that magnetic resonance is that's our driver through life so think of that 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 energy as the chauffeur so imagine if you were being chauffeured around in a nice fancy limousine and you had snacks and drinks in the back and you were able to look outside and see this beautiful scenery go by but you were busy trying to backseat drive or trying to take the steering wheel from from the chauffeur how far do you think you're going to get on your path if you're trying to micromanage the the ride when you're really supposed to be back there enjoying the whole experience and looking out the window so the personality in in its in its in the place where you have a balanced mind body construct you know you're balanced in the mind and body 
is really designed to look out the window or maybe maybe open the sunroof and you know stand up <laughs> stand up through the sunroof and and look at everything out there and wave but you know it's not designed to drive the vehicle <laughs> drive the body the the chauffeur the magnetic resonance in the heart drives the body wow that's a great story and that's a great way to see it and so when we try to drive the body, so to speak, with our head and our mind, it's the wrong driver. And that's why we crash, because it's not the chauffeur that knows where we're going and how to stay on the road. Yeah. Wow, that's great. I love that story. Thanks for sharing that story. Yeah, it, it kind of makes it concrete in terms of, you know, who who's on first and what goes where and who does what inside of our being. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's amazing. So how has you studying and working with human design and coaching and helping people, how has it impacted your personal life? It has um, really made it important, essential for me to walk my talk. You know, I, I'm, I'm one of those, in, I'm a projector energy type. I don't have that sustainable energy to work and I used to work like that and I burned out that's how I found human design when I burned my whole life out <laughs> and and I have a lot there are a lot of projectors who follow me there are other you know generators and other types but I feel um, a responsibility I guess to myself first of all to really um, take impeccable care of myself, even in the midst of imperfection, you know, and my life is really kind of at times chaotic and topsy turvy, but, but it has, it has really um, set the stage and the platform and the foundation for me to be able to weather all kinds of changes, all kinds of shifts, all kind, kinds of unexpected things that happen in life. Um, and still be able to um, function in in a way where my body gets to gets to be the gets is a is a good vehicle. I've got my body back in good shape, and I can listen to my driver and let the driver drive me through my life in in the midst of all of the chaos and whatever else is going on outside the vehicle. <laughs> wow! Yes, that's how it is when we race sailboats. The helmsman, who's the driver is required just to steer and leave all the rest of us alone. And the navigator is the one who kind of calls the shots and the tactician of the, this is where you drive the boat, you know, tack here, mm -hmm. over there, do this. And then all the rest of us, the crew, um, we all have our job. We all have something important to do and we shouldn't be messing up on each other. And if you grab the helmsman's helm and we start steering the boat in weird ways, all chaos happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like if you try to drive the chauffeur's, you know, steering wheel, it, it'll wreck the car, it'll wreck, you know, something. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's important that we stay home, do our own responsibility and be clear on it and allow the driver to drive. Yeah. All of them steer the boat and yeah. do our own part because it makes exactly. the driving easier and we're not yeah. fighting and resisting them. Exactly. Exactly. And it's that release of resistance, I think, that's so powerful, you know, that if you can, um, you know, really know who you are, really trust yourself, come to that place where you can trust that this is me and all that other stuff is someone else's circus, someone else's monkeys. I don't have to, I don't have any control over it. I only control me. I can manage my energy. It, it puts, for me, it has put me in a place of a greater self-acceptance because also in everyone's chart, there's like a conundrum, like there's a little something that you came in with or you're here to kind of experience or something that doesn't line up, something that you're here to sort of maybe struggle against or to a theme that, that recurs in your life. And it's sort of all wired into the chart for your, I guess, for your growth. It really makes it so that, um, and that's kind of, kind of what you are what you're navig being navigated through when you relax 
you know, instead of it, instead of the challenge that that you're sort of working with being this big stumbling block, when you're able to sit back in that limousine and let you and observe what's going on without the judgment or the overthinking, accepting exactly where you are, that challenge no longer becomes a stumbling block. It becomes a point of mastery. It becomes a place where, where, where you're, you, you can have that potential to, to become wise about what that theme's about, you know, how do I manage my energy or myself or my attitude uh, to uh, work with this, and how does it become uh, something that uh, strengthens me rather than tears me apart. Wow, yeah, that's, that's what the mastery is. And so by you coming out of that burnout phase and really learning this human design on all these deeper levels, you've been able to walk your talk and master the areas that before were kind of like an Achilles heel that you didn't know you had. <laughs> Oh yeah, and and I think it's an ongoing process, yes. you know, because there, as you develop and you know as you go through different phases of of your life, the decades of your life, different challenges come up, <laughs> and and it's like okay, well, what do I take from? How do I take what I know? How who I know myself to be now, and how I uh, live as myself now, and carry it into this next phase where there are different challenges some of them not mine, <laughs> you know, or some of them from the, on the, in, out there in the world and not necessarily something that I need to, um, to uh, get caught up with or allow to, to hold me back. How do I relax into that? Wow. Relaxing into it. That's amazing. So what do you do to relax? Mm. How do you take care of herself and relax in your world? Because, you know, you spend a lot of your time helping people find their way, you know, and that's, that takes a lot and a lot of connection and you're very, very good at it. And so I imagine you've come up with some great ways to nurture yourself and relax and, and decompress. So what are some things Sandy likes? Well, you know, I was thinking about this this morning, you know, I love how synchronicity is because I was out on my walk this morning and I was thinking about how important it is to stay grounded I mean, literally, literally feet on the ground, butt on the ground, sitting out on the ground, um, being in nature. And, and I'm lucky because I live in an area of the country where there is a lot of natural beauty and a lot. I don't live in an urban area. I live out where I can sit on the ground and nobody's going <laughs> to gonna say, hey, you're in front of our office building. <laughs> move <laughs> and it, it, for me that's very rejuvenating you know to to just spend time alone and here's another human design term I spend time alone discharging energy that I've absorbed and picked up and and, and allow myself to bask in the beauty of my surroundings and then once I've done that then I'm ready to you know, go out with friends and, you know, do the social things and be with people who uplift me and really support me. Um, but that foundation of being grounded and allowing myself to release whatever I've picked up from other people is, is, is essential for me. And I don't know if that's, what do I do for fun, but my life is not, nearly as much fun if I'm not taking care of myself on that level. Let's put it that way. All right. So being grounded and connected and putting your, your own self care and, and being in nature, which I think is beautiful is necessary for the foundation for you to do anything else, to go have even more fun with friends or family or to go yeah. on an adventure or to be fully present for somebody you're working with. So without that foundation, they get a Sandy, but they don't get the fully grounded, yeah. aligned, integrated Sandy. Yeah. And the other thing that I do is um, creativity is important for me. I paint. I, if I'm pointing back at some paintings on my wall. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I paint as, as something that um, to, to express, I guess, what's inside of me. Um, and it's very relaxing. 
it's something that um, I think my heart resonance guided me toward as, through life a few years ago. And um, I'd never picked up a, a paintbrush in my life. And all of a sudden, I had this real burning desire to learn how to paint. And thank God for YouTube, because there are quite a few art teachers on there. And I can use my uh, laptop or my phone and put my phone up on the easel and stream a YouTube video and learn how to paint a landscape or a, a bird or whatever it is that I feel will relax me at that moment. Oh, that's genius. That's how I learned how to, how to um, knit these blessing sweaters, um, scarves I make for people as I went on YouTube. And so YouTube is a great resource for all of us to learn whatever cool creative outlet it is that we want to learn. That's neat. <laughs> I love it. It sure is. I love it. And so let's shift a little bit to um, your, your business. And the fact that you do coaching for people using human design to help them. Um, can you give us a little feel for what that looks like? Like if I was going to call you and say, Sandy, will you help me? And I want to check out this human design thing. What kinds of things, what's it look like? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'm probably not a coach in the traditional sense because I'm more of an advisor and a guide. What, what I, one of my strengths is um, that I share information. I go and have experiences, and then I share what did or didn't work. And, and when I'm sitting with someone with their human design chart, that's, that's pretty much how I coach them, with sharing information about them. And then if I have an experience that would help them I would do that. So the first thing that most people do with me is they either take a course, they take a class. I have a few classes that I do and I'm actually getting ready to do one on um, how to read your human design chart without totally stressing yourself out or how to, how to decipher your human design chart without totally stressing yourself out. Very basic course. You know, they, they have either heard of human design somewhere else or they've been following me and they want to, get their toes wet or their feet wet just to understand what they're looking at on their chart. And that's usually where we start. And I usually start with a very, the basics of what's your energy type, what's your strategy, what's the, how do you, how are you designed to make decisions, all of those basic things. And then, you know, through the, even through the course of your initial session, um, we usually, I like to make it very practical. So we usually touch on what is at the top of your list of concerns. And, and it, has to usually do with how how do how do I be in relationship? How do I make my relationships more harmonious? Um, how do I make my business work? <laughs> or um, how do I take better care of myself? I have health issues, and how do I take better care of myself? Those are the three biggies, and I usually try to tailor that initial session around getting those basics of understanding your chart in, and then how that applies to your top of the list concern. And from there, you know, a lot of times what happens is people take that, and, and unless they're like in a big shift where they need ongoing support right away, they'll take that and they'll integrate it for a little while because it does take a little time to kind of integrate what they've taken in. And, and for that reason, they get a recording and, you know, they can go back over and over it. Um, and then when they're ready to come back, we go into the deeper stuff of, okay, well, you know, again, couched in, what's your primary concern of your, in your practical daily life? And then we tailor the way that we look at the chart uh, depend, uh, according to what their concern is. So I would coach someone who's having uh, self-care issues, who wants to work on their self-care in a very different way than I would someone who is uh, looking at their business. But we would probably look at how they're taking, if someone's looking at their business, we would probably make sure the pieces are in place for their self-care before we work on the business. Oh, that's a great way to do it. So, so though there is a coaching aspect, you're more of an advisor and um, like a mentor guide person that can say, okay, looking at all of these things here and hearing what you have to say, this is where is the best place to look and that kind of thing. Um, and that is, that is, that is an amazing gift and talent and service right there. That's beautiful. 
And you, yeah. have, you have courses out there people can take too, right? I'm working on uh, developing courses. Yep. I have one for generators and manifesting generators, but this, this new one that's coming out is really the place to start for any new person coming to human design. You really have to have those building blocks of the vocabulary, understanding where this weird looking representation of you came from and what what are all the pieces and what do they mean in a nutshell and then what do I do with it <laughs> that's great so I'm um, we're going to put your website and how to contact you in the show notes so that you can contact Sandy and if you have any questions for her or you want her to do your human design chart and go over it with you and work with her and I'm sure she's happy to do that because she is, as you can tell by listening to all of her wise wisdom, how it flowed out of her, that there's much more than that in there. She is an amazing gift to all of us who are in her world. So I will make sure all of her information and how to follow her on all of her social media channels are on these show notes so that you can find her and tell her you heard her on this podcast. And so is there, before we close the show, I always ask everybody if there's one burning desire, is there anything that's on your mind you would like to share with all of us um, before we close? I think what I want to leave with is um, just the reminder that we already have the wisdom about who we are hardwired in us. And, you know, if, if you've done a lot of your own personal work then you probably know yourself pretty well and uh, if human design piques your interest then it would just help you to refine what you already know um, and if you're at, a, at the place where you're just tuning into who, who am I or just having those questions of who am I and how do I make my life work better then that blueprint uh, will get you to that place of knowing who you are and trusting who you are, and really being able to live the life that, that you were, you're designed to live. So, but it's all in there. It's all in there. And um, if it's all in there, you have access to it. And so there is the hope, right? And there is that feeling of an understanding that we have everything we need and it's, our lives are about that uncovering and allowing it to emerge fully into our world. So Sandy, I want to thank you for taking the time for sharing so much valuable wisdom with us on the show today and for giving us a little peek of what it's like to think about the world through human design and to get to know you a little bit. You really do a great service for people and, and I really admire you and the work that you do. You inspire me. And I smile every time I think of you um, because you have a glorious smile and an amazing presence. And so thank you so much for taking your time out on the show today. Thank you, Diane. It was a real pleasure. Well, everybody, until the next episode, remember, keep your face toward the sun so the shadows fall behind you. And remember, you're here on purpose, with a purpose, fully equipped. So go get them. Are you tired of searching for someone who understands you? Join our Facebook group, Someone Gets Me. In this group, you will be able to connect with others who are intense, sensitive, smart, talented, and wanting to be understood. Diane shares her insights and teachings, and you can connect with others. Join today.